In today's video, we're going to be having a look at three different ways to get your Eufy cameras into Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. In the previous video, I showed you three different ways of adding your Reolink cameras into Home Assistant. Now, ever since creating that video, I've had a lot of requests for the same thing, but for Eufy cameras. Is that how we say it? Eufy? 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 <laughs> but yeah, from this point on in the video, I'm going to be saying Eufy, but if you say it differently or there actually is a correct pronunciation, then let me know in the comments below. And moving on from that, if you are a Eufy user and also a Home Assistant user, then you'll know it has always been challenging getting the two to work and play nicely together and actually get your cameras from Eufy into Home Assistant as well as your sensors and all the other bits of data. Now, two things to point out here. First of all, that is still a challenge. And at the time of recording this video, there currently isn't any kind of official Eufy integration or any kind of other third party magical integration or add on that just makes it all work and play nicely together. There are, however, a few wizards and geniuses within our community that are currently working on some very promising integrations and add-ons that might allow this to all work seamlessly in the future. And we're going to be taking a look at two of those in this video. And the second thing that I want to just point out and highlight is these projects and integrations are still a work in progress. So if you don't come into it with the mindset of it's all just going to work perfectly and be flawless and shiny and polished, then you're not going to be let down. But a massive thank you to the guys that are creating these integrations and projects. You're doing an awesome job. I'll have links to all of those projects in the description below. So feel free to check those out if you want to read up on it a bit more. So we're going to be having a look at three different methods and we'll be starting with the simplest. But with each progressive method, it's not going to get more difficult, but there are going to be more steps involved in order to actually get the integrations or add-ons up and running. Also, just to mention, not all Eufy cameras are compatible with each method, but I'll let you know which cameras I'm using, and I'll also try and let you know which cameras are compatible with each method. And as always, this video will be chaptered, so if you've got a particular camera or a particular step that you want to follow, then they'll be linked in the chapters below. Let's kick this thing off then, and we'll start with RTSP. For this method, and in fact for all of the methods, I'm going to be assuming that you've got your cameras set up and linked with the Eufy app. And for this first method, we're going to be making use of one of these, which is the Solo Indoor P24 camera. The P24 is the more expensive version of Reolink's PTZ camera. It offers 2K resolution as opposed to the 1080p found on the P22 model. And the key factor that we care about is this bottom one here where it has RTSP in the storage. I did have a look online and also through Eufy's website to try and find a definitive list of cameras that support RTSP, but I couldn't find one. So the actual easiest way for you to identify if your camera supports this or not is to just open up the storage options and if you see NAS and then RTSP then you'll be good to go and if you don't then your camera doesn't support RTSP. To actually get the RTSP stream for our camera we're going to first need to open up the UEFI app and from here you're going to want to choose the camera that you want to stream and then select settings. In the settings you'll see an option for storage and under storage you should see NAS and RTSP and then you're just going to want to turn this on. With that turned on, you'll then just need to run through some of the on-screen setup steps, which will include things like setting a static IP address for your camera, setting the optional recording mode, so if you want it to be events or continuous, and then finally, optionally setting some security settings. So this will be whether you want to require a username and password in order to access the stream. Once you've completed that, you should be able to see all the RTSP settings for your camera and within those settings, you'll see a URL that your camera can be accessed from. We can then take that URL and head over to Home Assistant and from here, we can add that camera to our dashboard. To add the camera to my dashboard, I'm going to be making use of a custom component called WebRTC Camera. I'm not going to be going through the setup and install of WebRTC Camera, but if you want it, it is available on Hacks and I did actually cover the setup and install in that previous Reolink video, so you could go and check that out. All we're then going to do is just add a new card to the dashboard. So I'm going to choose add card and then WebRTC. And in here, I'm just going to set the URL to be the RTSP stream for my camera. And once I've done that, I can just hit save and I can now see that camera stream on my dashboard. And you can do all the usual camera stuff like make it full screen. Now, obviously I've chose to use WebRTC here, but you can add this however you want as you've got that stream URL. As I mentioned in the previous video, there's a whole bunch of different ways to add RTSP streams into Home Assistant, but this one happens to be my preferred one. If you've got one that's different to this, that's your preferred method, then let me know in the comments below. Next up is the Eufy Home Assistant MQTT Bridge. If you saw my video on Eufy's wireless 2K doorbell, then you'll have seen that I've covered this add-on before. This add-on supports a wide range of different Eufy devices, and I'll have this page linked in the description below if you want to go and check out if your device is supported. This add-on is going to allow us to access various bits of information from our camera, such as motion detection, person detection, 
getting the last thumbnail and if it supports a battery then the battery status of that device. The bridge takes those bits of information and passes it through MQTT into Home Assistant and we end up with something like this. So this is my wireless front doorbell and I can see various entities for it. All of these entities can be used within Home Assistant automations, so things like the image of the last event, the battery level of the camera and also if there's any motion being detected. And here's one for that PTZ camera that we just added through RTSP. So we can see it's got a few different entities compared to the doorbell. With this one I've also got an image of the last event that occurred, but I've also got detectors for things like sounds, pets and crying. Okay then, to get started with the bridge you are going to need to have an MQTT broker set up and working. Now I'm not going to be going through the process of setting up and installing a broker in this video, but I have covered it in previous videos if you wanted to check that out. But if you do have a broker set up and installed then you're going to be good to carry on. So the first thing we're going to want to do is head over to the add-on store. And from here we're going to need to add a new add-on. So in the top right we're going to click the three dots. And then we're going to click repositories. And in this add section here we're going to need to enter the URL for the add-on. Now I'll have this in the description below so feel free to go and grab it from there and just paste it in here. And once you've pasted that in you're going to want to just hit add. And you should see that appear in your list there. And if we close out of here now we should see these new repositories which are available here. And now I should also see the UEFI Home Assistant MQTT bridge. Now that we've got the repo added, we're going to just need to add the add-on. So we're just going to select it there. And then from the list here, we're going to just choose install. And then we're just going to give that a minute to do its thing. The bridge currently doesn't support two-factor authentication. So in order to get around this, we're going to need to set up a second account. And we're going to need to share our cameras and devices from our main account with this secondary account. And with the secondary account, make sure you don't enable two-factor authentication. Now it's up to you if you want to carry on with this method or not, but I should also just highlight here, you are going to be given a second account access to your camera feeds and this second account doesn't have two-factor authentication. So whatever password you set on that account, you're going to want to make sure it's as strong as possible. If you are carrying on with this method, there's going to be a few changes that you need to make here. So you're going to need to enter the username and password for your secondary UFI account. So this will be the one that you've just created without two-factor authentication. Below that then you're going to need to set the URL for your MQTT broker and you're also going to need to provide a username and password that can actually access your broker. And if you've got all of those things you're going to want to just hit that save button. You're then going to want to jump back to the info tab of the add-on and you're going to click the start button. From here if we just open up the log at the top there we should see that the information starts populating in the log. We shouldn't see any errors in this log and if we scroll down we should see any devices that we have start getting discovered. If we now come out of here and head into configuration and then integrations. We should be able to see our brokers now got more items in it. So if you saw those messages in your log, you should be able to see them in your broker. So I can see there mine's gone up to six from two. So if I select that, I can now see all of those UFI devices. So I can see the back doorbell, I can see the bathroom sensor, I can see the front doorbell, and I can also see that kitchen camera which we added again in the RTSP. I've just gone ahead and ordered that list by manufacturer just to make it a bit clearer to see what's going on. So you can see there those top two are the doorbells and we can actually see the battery status for those and I've actually got this top front doorbell one on my desk charger now so let's select that one and have a look at what we can see. As I pointed out we can see the battery level for it, we can see if the doorbell's been pressed or when it was last pressed, we've got a little image there of the last event so any kind of event is going to take a picture on the camera and then we'll be able to see that there and then we've also got motion detection and person detection. I've got that front doorbell face down on the desk in front of me so when I pick it up we should be able to see how quickly those entities actually react. So what I'm actually expecting to happen here is that when I pick up that doorbell the person detection should kick in and the sensor is going to turn on for about 5 seconds and then turn back off and I should also get a new image based on what the camera can see. Now the reason it only stays on for 5 seconds is because we're just making use of the default configuration and in the default configuration it has this value of off delay and that's currently set to 5 which is 5 seconds. So if when a person or motion is detected you wanted the sensor to stay on longer you just need to update that little number there. Let's give the test a go then. So I'm going to pick up the doorbell now. I'm giving it a little wave and I can hear the camera clicking in and that light should light up to say that the camera's sort of spotted something so it's lit up and I can see there that the motion the person detection's kicked in. Now this image won't update here so I'd have to refresh the browser for it to actually display a new image there but if I click it I should hopefully have an image <laughs> of my face. <laughs> and based on this lovely image we're going to say that that was a success. Now the person detection wasn't the quickest, there was a couple of seconds delay there but it probably is quick enough if you want to just use it to run a quick script or an automation. 
The actual quality of the image isn't the best, but if you're familiar with these doorbells, then you'll know that this is just the little thumbnail it uses when it's actually capturing some information about a person to actually do the identification on, and they're never usually the best quality, but you can see that it's a person. And this image is going to be more than fine if you're passing this to a phone as a notification to say that someone was spotted or something like that. The other sensors do also work and they have roughly that same delay as the person detection. The only one that I've had a bit of an issue with is the battery level. So the battery level seems to report either lower or higher than what's actually available. And I don't know if this just reports less often than the other sensors, but it just seems to be a bit off. And while we're on the topic of batteries, if you're making use of this add-on and you're using the battery powered doorbells like I am, you're gonna notice a significant drain on your batteries just from this add-on. To help with the battery drain, you can adjust some of the settings within MQTT and also some of the settings within the Eufy app. In my experience of actually using this add-on, it does affect the battery quite a lot. So I'd probably say it lasts probably a week and a bit, maybe two weeks, as opposed to the 80 odd days if you're not using the add-on. So it is a big dip, but again, it's up to you if you wanna make use of this. So as another quick test here, I'm gonna pick up the camera and also my phone. So we can see I've got no notifications on there. So if we wait to see the actual camera detect my, me as a person, so that's changed on there, and there's the phone notification. And with that test, you can see that the person detection within the add-on was actually quicker than the phone notification coming through. And for all of you eagle-eyed viewers, you may have also noticed that the battery level updated then, so it seems that the battery level also changes when another event happens. So that was a quick look at the MQTT bridge. We can make use of that add-on to get information about our cameras and devices, so we can get the sensors and we can also get the last image captured. If you're not bothered about accessing your live feeds and those sensors give you enough information, maybe you just wanna know when the doorbell's been pressed in order to trigger an automation, then this add-on is definitely worth a look. And now let's move on to our final method and we're gonna have a look at UFI security. For this last method, I'm not going to be running through a full setup and install, just because there's a few different optional things that you can add, and they'll differ for each person. And besides which, there's a very comprehensive guide available on the integrations GitHub page. This guide contains all of the information that you're going to need in order to get the UEFI security integration set up and installed. Just make sure you follow every single point. If you do have any issues following that guide, then the guys that are actually working on this project are super responsive and very helpful. And if you would like to see me do a full video on this with a full setup and install, then let me know in the comments below. As I'm not running through the setup and install process for this method, what I am going to do instead is just quickly run through some of the different things that you can do with this integration. So some of the differences and some of the extra things that you get. So straight off the bat, once this is all set up and working, you'll have access to all of those same devices that you did with the bridge, but you'll also get access to a few extra ones. So I can see straight away, I've got access to the home base. Some of Eufy's doorbells and cameras come with the home base, which they link to. The home base acts as like a mini NAS and also as a speaker for an alarm and also your doorbell. With this custom integration, you actually get access to the home base. And within the home base, you can actually set the security mode on it and you can also arm and disarm it. With this custom integration, the battery levels seem to update much quicker and seem to be more accurate. I haven't actually used this one long enough though to know how much of an effect it actually has on things like the battery powered doorbell. However, I would imagine it would be the same as the other one as you're adding extra functionality to your doorbell. With this integration, the devices and entities are added directly and there's no need to set up an MQTT broker. You also get a couple of extra sensors so you can see things like if the doorbell is enabled and the Wi-Fi signal level. And on top of that, you get access to a whole bunch of different attributes that you can make use of about your device. So let's have a look at those now. So if I click the doorbell one there and then go to the settings, you'll see this option here for attributes. So I'm gonna expand that. And as I said, you get access to a whole bunch of different attributes about your device. And if you wanted to, you could turn all of these into sensors. In that list of attributes, you'll find this one called picture URL which will contain a URL which will link to an image of the last event captured by your camera. This is by no means the best test or the most scientific way of doing this, but on the far left there, we've got the MQTT bridge, and then just here, we've got the UEFI security. So I'm gonna pick up the doorbell now and we'll see which one's person detection kicks in first. So the person detection for MQTT is just here, and the person detection is just here for the UEFI security one. So let's go ahead and pick the doorbell up. So I picked it up, let's give that a little wave if the camera wants to wake up and it's awake and there we go going back through the footage frame by frame 
The person detection on the bridge and the UEFI security both actually kick in at the same time and both of them happen before the phone notification comes through. And here's a look at our PTZ camera within this integration. So again, I've got the same entities as before with a couple of extra ones, but at the top here, you'll see that I've got the camera and you can see that the status is currently set to streaming RTSP. And that's because I've got that RTSP stream on my Home Assistant dashboard. In the bridge, this top entity was just an image, but within this integration, it's not, it's a full camera. So if I click it, I can see it's got an entity ID of camera.kitchen and if I click the settings in the top right there, I'll get access to the live feed for that camera. So here, for our PTZ camera, we can see Casper's bed again. And as this is a camera entity, you can do all of the usual camera entity related things like take a snapshot or take a recording. I believe that that live stream is also supposed to work with the wireless doorbells, but it currently hasn't worked for me. So if you are making use of this and that has worked for you, then let me know in the comments below or at least let me know what I'm doing wrong. I know that you have to make use of the start and stop services for the streams, but I have tried those things and it just hasn't worked for me. So just to wrap up some of the key differences between this integration and the bridge add-on, with this integration, you're going to get access to a few extra entities and you're also going to be able to make use of all those different attributes that I showed you. You're also going to be able to access live streams when and if it works. And the other key one for the integration is it supports two-factor authentication. So if you do use a secondary account, you don't have to worry about it only being protected by a password. And there we go. That's been a look at three methods for getting UFI cameras into Home Assistant. Let me know in the comments below if you actually make use of any of these methods to get your cameras or any of the entities into Home Assistant. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my patrons. They help support and fund the channel, which allows me to keep creating content like this. If you're interested in helping support and fund the channel and also becoming one of these awesome dudes, then there'll be a link to my Patreon in the description below. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.